So welcome to my absolute beginner blender tutorial. If you've never opened blender before, this is the tutorial for you. Um, I'm going to take you through subdivision surface modeling. I'm going to take you through everything you need to know to be able to make a cute scene and to also be able to make more scenes afterwards. So that's really the purpose of this tutorial is not to take you through step by step how to make exactly what I've made. Um, my intention is for you to get an understanding of Blender um, and how you can create your own scenes and make your own ideas in Blender. So I'm giving you a lot of really useful basic tools. Um, there is still a lot in this tutorial, so please take it slow. Um, I understand that when you're starting to learn Blender, it can be completely overwhelming and there's way too much to learn. Um, so please take this slowly. I would really suggest watching the first part of the tutorial and going over it again yourself to really get that base level of understanding of how Blender works and then move on to the second part of the tutorial. This is the final scene that we are going to be working towards creating. So by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to make all these objects in this scene. Um, and I'm also going to give you some prompts of what projects you can make next. Alrighty, so welcome to Blender. Uh, this is what you're going to be met with when you first open up your Blender file. So we've got a camera here, we've got a cube, and we've got a light. Um, so first, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of Blender and how to use and navigate the viewport. So you click to highlight and you get this orange outline when you've highlighted something and it's selected. Um, now, I have a mouse. I have like this normal looking mouse with all the buttons on it. Um, and I use my middle mouse button to rotate around. So I use the middle mouse button the most, and it is so useful. I would really recommend using an actual mouse. And then I also shift and hold the middle mouse button to pan around the scene like this. So these are the two uh, methods that I will use the most to move around my scene. You can see it's like very muscle memory for me, um, and I will use my middle mouse button along with the scroll wheel um, and shift to navigate my scene. So yeah, you can get a full view of everything in your scene by doing this and just scrolling in to get close up. Um, alrighty, so from here, let's delete out these things in our scene. Um, so all we're doing is left clicking and then we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna go delete. And just a note here, I'm gonna try and use as little shortcuts as I possibly can because I think that that is the best way to be introduced to Blender. I think that when you're starting in Blender, there is so many things that you get hit with at the very start of your journey that it makes it really easy to give up. Um, so I want to try and walk you through this as simply as possible, just because there's already so many things to learn. Um, I don't want to be adding remembering shortcuts on top of that. It's just going to be overloading. Um, so we're just going to right click on that and delete it. Left click, right click and delete. Okay, so now we have nothing in our scene. Alrighty, so to add objects into our scene, we're in object mode here, and up here we have add. If you click on add, then you get this drop down of all these things that you can add into your scene. Um, so if you hover over mesh, we get a drop down of all the different meshes that you can add, and then we get a whole stack of different options here, but today we're just gonna be using mesh. So we're gonna be making a cake. So the question here, is what of these objects can I use to make a cake? So you have to use your problem solving skills to be able to figure out what's going to be the easiest way to make the object that you're after uh, with these primitive objects. So for a cake, it's definitely going to be a cylinder. Um, you could probably work it out with a lot of these um, different primitive objects, but a cake, uh, sorry, a cylinder is definitely going to be the easiest way to get a cake. So let's bring a cylinder into our scene. Alrighty, there it is. Um, so now we can see that it is super blocky, like it has all of these um, edges here which aren't really gonna work for us. Um, and it's a little bit too tall. Like a cake is gonna be like squished out, or you know, it might just be a tall cake, but we need to find a way to squish down this cylinder to make it into the shape of a cake. So that brings us to the toolbar over here, which is really useful, and you're going to be using it every time you jump into Blender. So let's have a go with all these tools. So we're going to click on our cylinder, and then we're going to navigate over here to our toolbar. 
So if we go to move first, this is going to bring up this little gizmo here, this like gumball guy, and you can move in the different axes. Uh, I'm just pressing control Z here. It's so much little memory for me um, that I always use control Z, but you can also move it. And if you want to go back, you can go into edit and go to undo. Um, alrighty. So that's your move tool, which we will be using a lot. Then we can go down to our rotate tool. You can rotate in all these axes. You can use the colors, um, are aligned to these colors up here. So you know where your Z, Y, and X is. And then we're going to go to our scale. So then you can just click and drag along here and you get to scale your object on all these different axes. So from these three tools, we know that if I want to make my cylinder into a cake, that I need to scale it down on that Z axis. So I'm going to just squish him down a bit until you're happy with the size of your cake. And like about there is looking pretty good. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit here. Okay, beautiful. But now how do we get this cylinder from looking like this blocky guy into something beautiful and smooth? So what I'm going to be teaching you today is subdivision surface uh, modeling. So I use subdivision surface modeling for all my projects. It is a great tool um, or a great method, I guess, to make pretty final renders. Like if you're just after making like an animation or a scene in Blender, um, subdivision surface modeling is a great option for things like making games um, and assets for games. Subdivision surface modeling isn't going to be your best option, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about making a pretty final render. So um, what subdivision surface modeling is, um, is I'm just going to quote from this website because I think it explains it way better than I can. So subdivision surface modeling is a technique that designers use to create highly detailed, scalable models from simple mesh models. So from this, you can make organic looking models in less time and more detail than other modeling methods. So let's have a go. What we're going to do is we're going to go over into our properties tab over here. So this little guy shows that this is our properties tab. And we're going to go down to this little spanner, which is the modifiers tab. And we're going to go add, and we're going to go search, and then we're going to search subdivision surface, and we're going to click on that one. Now, at first, this is going to give us this crazy model. So what this modifier is doing is it's modifying our object by subdividing each of the faces into more faces to give it this smoother look. But the issue here is that there isn't enough faces in this model for it to be able to properly calculate um, into what we want, which is like a smooth looking cake. So we need to go in and edit this cylinder to have enough faces for the subdivision surface modifier to then be able to give us the outcome that we want. Let's just turn up um, the levels viewport so that we can see um, these faces with more subdivisions in it so it's really smooth. And you can see um, what this looks like at the moment with zero edits to our cylinder and using the subdivision surface modifier. So let's delete um, this modifier and let's go into our edit mode and let's start editing our cylinder so that we can get this cake. So let's just click delete here. Alrighty. So now I'm going to introduce you to edit mode. So let's highlight our cylinder. We're going to go up here to where it says object mode, click, and we're going to go here to edit mode. And then now we have access to our vertices, our edges, and our faces of our model, and we can edit them as much as we want. Um, so up here, you've got vertices select tool, you've got edge select mode, and you've got face select mode. So our vertices, we can see here, those are all our vertices. You can just click on those. And then we've got our edge select tool, which is also useful, and then our face select tool. So at the moment, we're going to use our face select tool. So at the moment, we can understand that our subdivision surface modifier was subdividing this one face into more faces, but it doesn't, it only has this one to work with. So we can't calculate it properly um, to make the outcome that we want. So we have to give it more faces to be able to calculate so that it gets um, the right outcome that we're looking for. So let's select this face at the top here. I'm going to right click. And it'll bring up a bunch of options of how we can edit this face. 
So what we're going to go down to is insert face, and then we're just going to move our mouse. And you can see that that's adding a whole stack of faces. So we're going to do that twice. Oh, escape. I'm going to do that again and just move the mouse a bit more um, so that I have more space to move inwards. Okay, beautiful. And then I'm just also going to do that again to the bottom. Insert faces. Alrighty. And then I don't want to edit these anymore. I want to go back to the subdivision surface modifier and see how inserting those faces has changed the final outcome. So let's go back up to edit mode. I'm going to go back into object mode. So that takes us out of editing this, um, the faces and vertices and edges of this object and brings us back to our main scene. So let's click on this and we're going to go back into add modifier, search subdivision surface, and already that is looking a lot better. Now really quickly, we're going to right click on this and we're going to go to shade smooth. So all that's going to do is as it says, shade it smooth instead of flat so that then we don't see um, those edges anymore of those faces. So that is already looking pretty good. Um, but I just want to add a couple more details into my cake. I feel like the edge isn't quite right at the moment. So I'm going to leave the subdivision surface modifier on at the moment so we can see how um, our... Let me just show you. Let's click on here. We're going to go back into edit mode and there we go. So we can see how the subdivision surface modifier is editing our original um, model. So this is what subdivision surface modeling is. It's taking this really simple object and making subdividing it into a much more organic shape that's smooth as well. So, alrighty, let's start editing this a bit more. Now I'm going to move from face select mode into edge select mode. And I want to select this whole loop around here. So you can just click and select these. You can press shift and it will give you multiple. Like you can select a lot of them. Or you can go alt to select the whole loop, which is a lot more convenient. Alrighty, so now that we've got this loop selected, we're going to right click again and it's going to bring up all the options of how we can edit this edge. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go down to bevel edges and then we're just going to drag again and that is going to bevel that and add a couple of extra faces so then we can see how that's changed the model. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm thinking I just want to move it down like a little bit more. Yeah, like I feel like that's about the shape that I want for my cake. It just sharpens that edge a little bit more by adding in um, some more faces. So let's do that again down here. And we're gonna go right click, and then we're gonna bevel that. Where is it? To Jung. Yeah, there we go. So we can just see by adding in those faces with the bevel tool, um, it just helps give it, it's, it rounds it out less, which is what we want. Like the more faces you get, the less it's gonna round it out. Alrighty, beautiful. So now we're going to go back into object mode and I reckon my cake is actually looking pretty solid. So before we continue, um, I want to make sure that you have a good understanding of subdivision surface modeling because I think that that is a pretty rough run through. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move this cake over to the left and we're going to add in a different mesh. So we're going to add in the monkey. So Blender comes um, with a monkey. And it'll just give you a good understanding of subdivision surface modeling. Alrighty, so here we have our monkey. We're going to pop into edit mode and see what the faces are looking like. Um, just going up here into face select mode so we can see. Alrighty, so now this is our basic model. So we haven't done anything to this. It has no modifiers. Let's go and add a subdivision surface modifier to that. So at the moment, it's subdividing it one time. So it's dividing each of those faces in this original model into multiple faces. So we can see here, if we look at this one face, we can see that it's dividing it into multiple faces, which makes it a lot smoother. So then let's go and go two times. 
and then three times and then four times. If your computer can't handle that, don't worry, because even if we go down to two and we right click and go shade smooth, you'll find that it ends up looking similar because those edges of those faces just get smoothed out by the shade smooth um, option. And you can also go back to shade flat um, just by clicking again, right clicking again and going into shade flat. Alrighty, let's delete out our monkey. So we're just gonna right click and go delete here. Let's move our cake back into the center. Now I want some little garnishes on my cake. So I'm going to add in some UV spheres. And we're gonna scale these down. And we're just gonna move them up to the top. Now we can just right click and shade smooth on this one because it already has a lot of faces, but I find that it still is like a little bit clunky on these edges. So I'm just gonna add the subdivision surface modifier just at one, um, and that should be fine. I just wanna scale it down a little bit. Alrighty, so now we're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna make three of these. So you can click on your object, right click, and then we're gonna go down to duplicate. And then as I'm like hovering around, you can see that I've got this other one, but I don't wanna move it anywhere. So I'm just gonna right click to release it. So it has been duplicated, but it's duplicated straight on top of the other one. So I'm gonna go up to move, and then if you move this, there it is, so you can get it. Um, if you wanna just make a little move, that works really well. So let's do that again. Right click, duplicate, right click again, just to release it, I'm gonna move it. Okay, and now we're gonna use this guy up here, which will help you view um, your model or your scene. Um, from different axes, which is really, really useful. So in this case, I want my little balls to be smack bang in the middle of my cake. So I'm gonna click on this Z here and it's gonna take me to view my object from a top down view on the Z axis. So then I'm gonna shift, so I'm shift clicking there, click one and then hold down shift to move all three of these. And then I'm just gonna center them on top of my cake. Alrighty, that's looking pretty solid. Okie dokie, so from here, how do we get this from looking like a gray boring model into something pretty that we can like explore and put onto Instagram or our portfolio or whatever we want? So we need lighting, we need materials, and we need to understand the render engines. So before we add in lights and cameras, um, it's really useful to understand the different modes you have to view your scene in. So we can access these by looking up here. So at the moment we are in solid mode. So this is a really useful mode um, to edit your objects. It doesn't take up very much computing power. So it's really convenient to keep it, especially when you have a big scene, um, just to edit your models because it's not loading in all this extra information um, with lighting materials. The next, we have the material preview mode. Um, so that's really convenient to just view your materials without having to go into render preview mode, which is gonna take up a lot more computing power. And then we have render preview. So this is the one that we're gonna use that shows us what our final render is going to look like. Um, but before we go into render preview, you need to understand how your model is going to be rendered in your scene. So we're going back into our properties um, panel here and we're gonna go up to render. So we're gonna click on that. Now, the first thing that comes up here is render engine. So at the moment, mine is set to EV. If you click on this, you also have cycles and workbench. So the two that people use is EV and cycles. So EV is Blender's real-time render engine, which is focused on speed and interactivity, um, which is quoted straight from the Blender manual, which is an amazing resource that I would 100% recommend you to go and read. Um, I will have the links to these in the description. Eevee is good because it's really fast and it uses less computing power. Um, so if you have a laptop or you have a computer that doesn't have a graphics card, Eevee is definitely gonna be the way to go. 
Cycles is what I used to render our final render that I showed in the start of the video. So Cycles is Blender's physically based path tracer for production rendering. Um, so it looks a lot more realistic, basically. It's supposed to mimic the real world, whereas Eevee is a lot more game-like um, and fast, but um, Cycles will give you a more realistic final outcome. Um, but because it's more realistic, it takes a lot more computing power as it's rendering um, the light a lot more with a lot more detail than Eevee is and the shadows. Um, so people usually opt for cycles to give you that more realistic render. I always use it because I want my renders to look more realistic, but really it's up to you at the end of the day and um, what your computer can handle. So let's just start with Eevee to render this one. Um, but before you render, I really suggest for you to save because sometimes turning on render preview can crash your computer. Um, so let's go up and save. Um, we're just going to call this, I've already done this tutorial like three times. So we're just going <laughs> to call it cake two and I'll save it there. So there you go, your Blender file saved. Um, so now you can come back to it in case you turn on render preview and your computer crashes. So let's give it a go. We'll click on that. Okay, so even though we're using Eevee, my computer took a really long time um, to switch from uh, solid mode into render preview. Anyway, um, we can't see anything in here because there's no lights. So the object is there, but there's no lights for Eevee to render for us. So we're going to go to add again, and we're going to go down to light, and we're going to choose area. Um, just because it's my favorite kind of light. So now we can see that getting rendered in, that our object is in fact there, um, and that we just need to light it up to be able to see it. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit so that we get a little bit more of a dynamic looking light there. Perfect. So let's just duplicate that one. Perfect. Okay, cool, that's looking good. But our cake is gray, so we need to add materials to our cake so that it can look more pretty. So I'm just dragging up this part of my window here. Um, and this is our timeline, but I don't want to use timeline at the moment. So I'm going to click over here. And then we get a drop down of all the different kinds of panels that you have access to in Blender um, to edit your scene. So we're going to go to Shader Editor. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to highlight and select our cake. I'm going to click new here to add a new material that's now assigned to our cake. And I want to make it pink. We're going to, we're going to go about here. Great. But I want it to be really glossy. So we have a metallic option. So you can play with this going all the way up and down. I don't want my cake to be metallic though, but I want my cake to be glossy. So I want the roughness to be lower so that it really has this like glossy look. So I'm going to set it, no, I want it to be glossier than that. I'm going to set it really low. Yeah, that's good. And then let's make these green. So we're just going to do that method again. And then now that we have that green, what we can do is add that material Now that we have that green material added to one of them, we can now assign it to all three. So if you click on this one, and rather than clicking new, you go to this material button, click on that, and then you can just choose the green one from the drop down. There we go. I also want these to be like really shiny. So there we go. Okay, so now we have the cake, but it's not looking very good because our lighting is um, pretty bad. Okay, so now we're going to add a plane so that we don't just have it on a transparent background. So we're going to go add, mesh, and plane. Then we're going to scale that one up. And the grid is still there um, just because that sits um, on the axis, but it won't come up in our final render. So we're just going to move these all up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And then let's assign this with maybe like a like a like a pink, maybe a, maybe a blue would be good. Yeah, you can see that Evie is struggling a little bit 
um, to get these shadows to kind of look how I want. Um, but we'll swap to cycles in a minute and see the difference. So I think I want these lights to be a lot brighter. So to make your lights brighter, you can click on your light and you'll notice that now in our properties panel, this little light button has shown up. So this will allow us to edit the properties of our light. So let's just turn this up like a lot. I'm just holding and dragging there. And then I want my light to be like a warmer color because I find that that just looks a lot nicer just looks really good. And I'm going to scale up this a little bit. So yeah, this here isn't any technical skill in Blender. Um, this is really just kind of understanding lighting. I wouldn't say that I have a particularly good understanding of um, how lighting works and how to properly set up a scene. There's countless tutorials out there to teach you about the best lighting setups. Um, but yeah, I'm just adding in a couple of lights to make it look a little bit more interesting and less flat. Let's let's go with a blue here. Mm, yeah, like a like a purpley color. Okay, cool. That's looking kind of fun here. Um, so now let's give cycles a go. So this is how the light is getting rendered and my materials are getting rendered in Eevee. So you can see that it's really fast, but it's very flat um, and it doesn't look as realistic. It looks quite like a game. So if we go back up to our render panel, let's try cycles. Now, again, I'm going to make sure that I save my project. Um, because every now and then cycles will just like crash your computer. It'll just glitch out. Maybe you don't um, have, you just have too much going on in your computer and it just totally crashes it. But I would really recommend saving at this point. You know, I've had this happen many times where I start cycles and my computer crashes and I lose my work. Anyway, let's click and let's go to cycle. Alrighty. So already you can see that the lighting is looking a lot more realistic. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to go from CPU to GPU as I have a graphics card in my computer. If you have a graphics card, you should definitely do this, but we have to make sure that it's actually rendering. So we're going to go into edit and preferences, then we're going to go down to system. And then here, we're just going to choose CUDA and make sure that we have our graphics card ticked. And then you can just exit out of that. So now it's using my graphics card instead of my CPU. So already you can see that that's rendering so much faster. As you can see, I have a 4090. Um, so my blender is going to render way faster um, than pretty much any other graphics card at this point. Um, so don't be alarmed if your computer isn't running cycles as smoothly as this. Um, you might wanna go back to Eevee and figure out your lighting and then just do your final render in cycles rather than having cycles run um, in your view, your preview of your render. It's really up to you and what your computer can handle, um, but I'm going to continue uh, in cycles for a little bit. So yeah, so now we can see that our shadow and our lighting is looking a lot more realistic as if this were a scene in real life. If we pop back into Eevee, you can really see the difference. Um, between the realism here. Alrighty, anyway, I'm feeling pretty happy with how this scene looks. Actually, I feel like these lights are pretty nice. Um, I might want to make this like a little bit darker. I feel like that color. Oh, the white's kind of cute actually. Oh, or even the pink. Yeah, actually, I want that to be like a really light pink. Oh yes, perfect. Okay, so I think that that looks really cute. So now how do we get this exported into an image? Um, so at the moment we're just previewing our scene um, in render view, we can still move around and do all of this. So how do we set a view and export it? We need a camera. Let's go into add, and then we're gonna go down to camera. And that's plonked that there, we can't see it because the other objects are actually hiding it. Let's just bring it up. There we go. Alrighty, now this button here is going to show us what the camera is seeing. At the moment, we haven't placed our camera in a good position, so let's move it to a much better position. Now, you see this tiny little arrow here? We're going to click on that. We're going to go down to view, and we're going to go camera to view. So this has locked our camera to what we are viewing of the viewport. 
um, which is really convenient. So I can move around um, and my camera is locked to that. So I'm just going to pick, um, I'm just going to pick a composition that I think is nice. So I'm going to go here. I think that that is nice. And then I'm just going to turn this off. So now that's locked. So now if I move around, um, rather than moving the camera, I leave the camera view um, and I can move things around again. Um, and I can move freely around my viewport again. And then you just click this button to end up in camera view. You can also click that again to leave it, which is really convenient. So now that we have our camera set up, once we're happy with our lighting, you know, we might just like move these around a little bit. Kind of want this background is very dark. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this light here. I'm just going to like rotate it and make it really big. And then I'm going to move it back a little bit so that then that's just lit up the back of our scene a lot more. So now we have this cake. It's looking cute. So now I want to render it. So let's go back up to our render. So I feel like everything's looking good. And now we have samples. So this is a really important part of your render to understand. Sampling is really important. Um, and understanding it is also important. Again, I'm not going to say that I have an entire understanding of how sampling works, but to quote the Blender manual, render samples are the number of paths to trace for each pixel in the final render. As more samples are taken, the solution becomes less noisy and more accurate. So basically, the more samples that you have, the more accurate your light is going to be, especially if you're rendering in cycles, just because it uses so much more accurate light. So at the moment I have it set to 4,000, it's going to take ages for this to render um, because it's going to have to calculate that light 4,000 times um, to make it as accurate as possible. So for a render like this, I think 100 is really good. We don't have particularly complicated light um, or reflections or any glass materials where it's going to take a lot of computing power to make sure that that reflection and the light going through it is accurate. But since we have a simple scene, about 100 samples is going to be really good and give us something that is pretty smooth and accurate and isn't particularly noisy. So once that's set, we're going to go up to render and we're going to go render image and that's going to render what we have um, being viewed through our camera. Click that. And there we go. We have our final render. I feel like that's all looking pretty solid. So let's go image, save as, and then we'll save it in here. We're going to call that cake three. Save that. Perfect. Now say we want this to be a square instead of um, 1920 by 1080. You can go down into output. You click on that and then here's our resolution. So at the moment we're rendering at 1920 by 1080. Let's say that I want that to be 1080 by 1080. That's going to change my camera into a square. So now that's kind of like zoomed it out a little bit. So I'm going to go back into my camera view and I'm going to turn on lock camera to view and just move in a little bit there, turn it off. We're going to render that again. Beautiful. There we go. Now let's see what happens if we go into render and we just render with one sample. Let's give that a go. Looks not too bad, actually. I'll just call that one sample. And then let's go back. Let's go, let's go to 50 samples. Fifty. So here's our cake with just one sample. It's our cake with 50 samples. Yeah, so here you can see how the light 
um, since it has more samples, so it's been calculated much more accurately. Um, yeah, honestly, like, it's not too bad. <laughs> with just one sample like yeah this light here is looking a little bit dodgy um, but overall I'd say um, that this scene doesn't actually need too many samples as you continue learning blender and you start using more complicated scenes and more complicated materials um, you'll find that you'll have to start um, increasing the maximum amount of samples but usually like you know 100 200 is pretty useful you're probably only gonna need like a thousand or more if you're using a glass material where Again, it gets really complicated to calculate the light. Um, but that's the basics of sampling and rendering in Blender using cycles. Of course, you can also use EV if your computer is struggling. Um, obviously, the light is a lot less accurate. Um, so let's just calculate that with 16 samples there, and we'll see what we get with EV. Alrighty, and then we'll save that out. So yeah, you can see how that looks um, a lot less realistic. Just, um, yeah, the light isn't calculated accurately um, and it just looks like it's from a game. So of course that style can be super useful and you can make amazing renders with Eevee. Um, you just kind of have to know what's gonna look good and what's not gonna look good in that style. It's just, it's just a different style. Um, but today we're working with cycles and subdivision surface modeling. Before you move on to the next part of the tutorial, just keep in mind that I'm gonna be moving a lot faster. So if this is your very first time in Blender, I would really suggest going back through this tutorial, look through this list, which covers everything that we have gone through so far in the tutorial. We're gonna be using all of these methods and techniques over and over in the next part of the tutorial. So if there's anything that you don't really feel comfortable with, um, I'd suggest going back to that part of the tutorial and playing around with it again. Um, I would also really suggest um, turning off the video and going back into an empty blender scene and trying to make the cake yourself. Yeah, just keep that in mind going forward that it might be a good time to just let all of that information sink in um, and just play around, play around with all the things that I've shown you. Try adding in different objects to your scene, try using different materials, um, try using different samples and seeing how that works on your computer. Um, yeah, I'd suggest trying all of these things before you move on just so that you can really feel comfortable going into the next part of the tutorial. Okay, so next part, let's make all the little bits and pieces to get to our final scene. So um, what I'm going to do first is just like empty out this scene. I'm going to go back into solid mode and I'm just going to delete everything that we don't need right now. Um, I'm just going to leave the camera in there. It's just kind of convenient. And we'll also delete that and we're just left with the cake. So I'm just going to grab everything here. So all I'm doing is I've got my move tool selected. We've got select box up here. That's the default. And if you just click and drag, you get to select everything um, that's within that um, box that you make. So now that we've grabbed it all, I'm just going to move it to the side. All of my objects are like spawning in um, from this point here, which is called our 3D cursor. So at the moment, my 3D cursor is at 0, 0, 0, um, which means that's where all of my objects, when I add them in the scene, they're all going to land there. So that's why I've just moved this out of the way so that this isn't in the way of everything that's getting spawned at my 3D cursor. First, we are going to make the island, which is pretty simple. So we go into add mesh. Now I've got the options here. So pretty much the only one that's gonna be useful is the cube. I could also use the plane, um, but in this case, I think the cube is just gonna be slightly faster. So let's pop him in there. Alrighty, so now I already know what shape I want it to be. So it's gonna go like about here. Okay, cool. Um, and then I've also got like two bits. Um, so that's about good for that one. So then let's duplicate it. And scale it down a little bit more. Yeah, like about here. Beautiful. Let me just put that like there. Is that scale about right? I think I can make it a bit bigger. Um, scale is things that you can 
you can change all of these as you go. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time that you do it. Um, I just have my reference image of the final render that I made before I started the tutorial. Um, okay, so now we want these to be more rounded. So what I'm going to do is go into edit mode and I'm going to go edge select mode and then I'm trying not to use shortcuts. I'm going to bevel this edge. But I want to bevel all of them actually at the same time. So I'm going to go around and shift click so that all of those are selected. Right click on one of them and it'll still do all of them. We're going to bevel those. Actually, <laughs> I want to do both at the same time. So we're going to select both of these and then we're going to go back into edit mode so that then. Uh, no, actually, that's going to be better. So if you select two objects you and then you go into edit mode, you can edit them both at the same time, which is quite convenient. So we're going to right click on it, bevel. And then once I'm happy with that, before I click away, there's this little thing that pops up here that says bevel. And if you click on that, you get a bunch of options of things that you can do to it. So I'm going to add more segments to it to smooth it out already. Okay, so from here, we just need to add a couple insets so that it will have enough faces to work with. Just trying to make those even. Now you can't go too far here or they overlap like this and they go crazy. Um, so we're just going to add those like that. Now this is great. If you press um, backslash, you get to isolate the object. Which is super useful for when you need to use these, when you need to get to the bottom side. And then you just press that again <clears throat> and you have it back. Now let's add our subdivision surface modifier and that is looking really nice there. So let's do that again to this guy. I'm going to go backslash and then we're just going to select both of these. Add our subdivision surface. Okay, that's looking... Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I feel like I could probably edit those. Like, they're not quite as even as I'd like. But I think that that's fine for this. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and I'm going to challenge you to pause the video and try to make the picnic blanket um, yourself without any help. Okay, so once you've given that a go, um, I'll show you how I would do it. So we're going to add a cube and do a pretty similar technique. I'm just going to make it a little... And then we're going to scale it up. Um, yeah, I kind of want that to be really small. Okay, we're going to go in here. Select these corners again. Right click, bevel, and I'm going to bevel these like a lot so that it has that like picnic-esque sort of look. And then I'm gonna like, oops, I wanna do this to both sides. Hey, let's isolate that. I'm gonna like inset pretty far. And then let's see, there we go. Cute. Okay, I quite like that. Is there anything else? Like maybe if we, like I want it, I put that inset in really far because I'd want it to like be a really long slope. Like I don't want the slope to be super like bung. I want the slope to be really small. 
um, like a picnic blanket kind of would. It's not super accurate, um, but I like that shape. So we'll move that down here. Check that that's, oh my cat. Maybe a bit bigger on the scene, like here. Okay, I'm just gonna move the cake onto there and we're gonna view it from top down to get all of those. Okay, that cake's looking massive. Okay, cool. I reckon that's about a good size for it. Okie dokie. Now we're going to make a plate. Um, this one is not, I don't know, it's not particularly hard. Um, you can have a go and see if you can figure it out. Um, but it took, you know, I think I had to watch a tutorial when I first started on how to make a plate because it's just, it's just not particularly intuitive. Um, so we're going to use a cylinder again. And yeah, I, f I forget how to do this like all the time. <laughs> and we're going to insert here just like a little one. And then I'm going to move it down to give it that like little, like what plates have. And we're going to insert again. And then probably about there. Doesn't have to be the most accurate plate in the world. For things like this, it's really convenient to use a um, reference. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna do a similar thing to the bottom. Insert that, but we're gonna take it the other way. And then let's do one more. Cool. Okie dokie. So we've got our very basic shape. Let's add a subdivision surface to it and see. Yeah, it's not quite there. We need to add these supporting loops in. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to bevel it. That's way too much beveling. We need a lot less segments here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm struggling to see um, with the subdivision service modifier on. So I'm going to go over here and you can click this button. So this will show you in your viewport um, and this will turn it off from your viewport. And this will turn it on and off from your render. But I usually don't mess with this one because otherwise it gets kind of confusing. Okay. I'm going to also bevel this one here. And I'm going to insert this one. And I think I want this to be a bit taller. So I'm going to face select a... Finally, and we're just going to move that up just like a smidgy.
Okay, I'd say that that's a pretty solid plate. So as you can see, there was quite a lot of just like mucking around and trial and error there. Um, and just like adding in faces and selecting different things and moving them around. But in the end, we've got a pretty solid looking plate. So let's move that one down into our scene. We'll pop it underneath our cake here. We'll move up our cake a little bit. And then we will move up our plate. You can also go here into the side view on the X axis to make sure that everything lines up really nicely. Okay, cool. Alrighty, so we've got a lot of our objects in here now. Um, so now we are going to make a cup. So the cup um, has a couple of new um, methods that I haven't shown you yet. So let's give it a go. We're going to use a cylinder because that's closest to a cup shape. Alrighty, and now we're going to go straight into edit mode and we're going to select this top face and we're going to delete that face because now we've got like this hollow shape that's like a cup. Then I'm going to select this bottom face and we're going to scale that down because then it gives us that sort of um, tapered cup-like shape. Then I'm going to go into edge select and select all of these and I'm going to make that just a little bit wider because I think that that's cuter for a cup. Okay, so now we've got the cup shape, but it's only made of faces which are planes. It doesn't have any thickness to it. So we need to add thickness. So we're going to use another modifier to do that. So we're going to go into modifiers and we're going to search for solidify. Now you can see that that has given it a little bit of thickness, but not enough. I want quite a thick cup. And I'm making that even thickness. I'm going to make that like pretty thick, which is cool. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to click on this little drop down arrow here and I'm going to go apply. So now when I go into edit mode, all of those faces are there for me to edit. Okay, so already here we can see that this isn't quite flat. It has this little curve. So I'm going to grab this loop here, this edge loop. And I'm just going to move it to make it a bit flat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be fine there. Okay, cool. And that is about all we need to do for the cup. Um, oh, wait, that's not true. Okay, and then we're going to go and add a subdivision surface to it. Totally not working. We need a lot of supporting edges here. So let's bevel this. Beautiful. I'm making this really close together because I want it to be quite a sharp edge. And then down here, we're going to go um, to... Isolate it and then actually let's just bevel that first. Bevel up. We need edge select rather than face select. We're going to bevel those edges. Perfect. Okay, cute. Up oh, the inside's still a little bit crazy though. Uh, let's just turn that off our viewport for a second. And I'm just going to inset these. And let's just inset again. There we go. Okay, that looks fine. Let's shade smooth. Cool. Okay, that's looking good. And now slash to just get out of that. And now we've got some little cups. So let's put them into our scene as well. Um, let's duplicate a couple. They're way too big. <laughs> Make three of those. Okay, cool. Cup is done. Um, let's add some more plates. I'm going to select all of these and just scale them down right now. Um, just a little trick here. I'm going to change this to individual origins so that 
So this is transform pivot point. So rather than it being the median point, which would be here um, of all three of these objects, I've gone to individual medians so that then when I scale them down, they don't move. They just scale at their points, which is here, here, and here, which is really convenient. <laughs> like I've said that so many times, usually it's really convenient. Um, so there we go. I want this plate to be a little bit smaller. Maybe like here. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, and then let's make more plates. So from here, if you're starting to feel pretty comfortable, you're going to start to want to use shortcuts. Um, so just very quickly, just skip this if you're already feeling overloaded. Um, but you can use Shift D to duplicate, which is quite convenient here. Um, and you can use S to scale. Those are really the two that I'm missing <laughs> using right now. Um, yeah, so if you are like, oh, I'm clicking so much, try those. Um, if you're feeling overloaded, don't even worry. Ah, okay, so next we're going to do some donuts. Um, I thought that it would be fitting. Um, as we all know of the iconic um, donut tutorial. So I feel like I need to pay uh, respect to the donut tutorial. You know, I watched the donut tutorial when I started learning Blender. So I feel like if I'm going to make a beginner tutorial, I have to include a donut. So hopefully um, you already know how to do this. Um, so I'm actually just going to move my 3D cursor by going shift and then right click. Um, because I want to make my donut over here rather than at 0, 0, 0 because all of my other stuff is there. Um, so just again, shift and right click. You can also shift and right click to put it on top here, which actually might be more convenient. Let's put it on top of the plate, shift and right click. Add, let's go Taurus. Now, before we click anything, we are going to make sure that it's a donut looking proportions. That looks about right. All I've done is changed the major radius there. Yeah, that's looking like a good donut. Okay, cool. Let's leave it, shade it smooth. I don't think that it needs a subdivision surface. I'm gonna scale that one in there. Beautiful, just gonna duplicate that there. Cool, okay, now we've got our donuts. Okay, let's make our orange juice. Now, I think this is another good time to see if you can figure out how to do it yourself. Um, I guess just think about it, even if you can think about um, how do you make a lid or how are you going to get this one started? What's going to be your primitive object? And maybe like the first couple of things that you could do to it. Um, give it a go. Um, especially if you are already like slightly um, experienced in Blender. But there is, again, a couple of techniques that we're going to learn. So let's make it over here. That's just shift and right click. And now we are going to add a cylinder again. Just gonna scale that one down. Alrighty, now here's where it gets slightly more complicated. I'm gonna go into edit mode, face select, select this top one. Now we're going to use the extrude region tool. Um, but for this, we're going to use E. So when I press E, I extrude. I think that using this is actually like more complicated. I find it more difficult. Um, so I would suggest using E. Okay, so here we're just going to use E and S. So E is to extrude and S is to scale. So let's go E. And then that's locking to the Z axis with that little blue line there. S. E. S. E. S. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then I need to make these a bit smoother. So I'm going to bevel this. It's looking nice. 
bevel this. So yeah, really the only new thing that we've learned there is how to extrude um, a face. And then I'm gonna actually make this a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna use S here. Just move that down a little bit just to get a nicer shape. Okay, cool. That's looking pretty good. Let's add a subdivision surface to it eight, but we haven't done the bottom. Let's go back into edit mode slash so that we can get to the bottom without having to move everything. And we'll just inset those. Perfect. Cool, I think that that's looking pretty good. Let's see what it looks like in Shade Smooth. Yep, I think that I want it to be a little bit longer though. Like it just doesn't quite look right. So I'm just gonna select, ah, oh, this is such a pain. Let me in, there we go. Ah. Ah. Alt, shift, alt, alt, come on, <laughs> have mercy. There we go. <laughs> and then we'll move that down. And then let's just slide some of these down a bit. Yeah, you'll see that quite a lot I'm clicking um, Alt and it's picking the wrong thing, um, which can be annoying. I just tend to click a lot <laughs> until I get what I want. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We'll go slash to get back. That's obviously way too big. Just sort of muscle memory-ing. Um, some of these commands now, but feel free to still go over here um, to scale. Okay, and then now we need a little lid. So I'm gonna go shift and right click to pop my 3D cursor up here so that now my objects are gonna like spawn here. Alrighty, and we're gonna add in, oh yeah, so how are we gonna make a, how are we gonna make a bottle cap? Like, you know, it's pretty, it's pr pretty straightforward at this point. Um, we're going to make a cylinder, scale it down really small. And yeah, that's not like super proportionally accurate. <laughs> um, so if you want to go in and make that um, more detailed and make the proportions accurate, um, be my guest. I'm just beveling these edges here with control B. That definitely needs a subdivision surface. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so now we're going to make the label of the orange juice. So that is not too tricky. Um, but we've got a couple new techniques. So we are going to make a loop cut. We're going to go control R and then we're going to click and slide it down so that now we have all of these faces in here that we can use to duplicate and make a label. So let's just go through that one more time. We're going to control R, click, slide this down, and then once you're happy with that placement, click again. Now we're going to go up to faces. We're gonna go Alt, and then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate. Now you can see we've got a duplicate here. We're gonna right click to release, and then we're going to go P, which will bring up the separate option. We're gonna separate by selection. Now this has made it into a separate object. So now we have two objects here. We've got um, the orange juice bottle that we just made, and now we have those faces duplicated as a separate object, which is really cool. So we're just gonna scale them up a little bit. Easy peasy. Now this is probably a good time to introduce um, your scene collection 
and um, this whole scene tab here. So this will show you all of the different objects that you have in your scene. So at the moment, I haven't organized any of these at all. And organizing your scene is really useful as you start getting more and more things into it. So when you click, you can see that this is cylinder 006. So I'm just gonna double click on that to rename it. We're gonna call it OJ bottle. We're gonna click on this OJ label. OJ lid. There we go. And yeah, I would suggest doing that for all of these so that you can keep your scene really neat. Um, but I can't be bothered doing that right now. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do it. Okay, next up, let's make the orange juice inside here. Um, so basically we need to get like the inverse of this shape. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this guy. We're gonna duplicate him and move him off to the side. I'm gonna go into edit mode, just gonna turn off the subdivision surface so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna grab these faces in here. Let's make sure we grab, wait. It's so tricky sometimes. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Grab you and then grab you. And then we're gonna duplicate that one. We're gonna use Shift D to duplicate that. And then P to split it out again into a separate object. Back into edit mode so that we can grab that object. I just had to double click um, to grab it. I'm gonna go edit mode. I'm gonna go into edge select mode, Alt. And then we're gonna right click and we're gonna press fill. Um, that's like a bit chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> of topology but it will do and now we have the inverse of that um, but I want it to be a bit smaller so I'm just gonna scale it down like this so that you know it's not filling the whole thing we'll just put it there cool oh actually we'll delete that um, perfect okay and now we have juice so that one was pretty straightforward. Um, the next thing that we'll make is a pillow. This is a really fun um, technique <laughs> to do. So we're gonna have a little introduction to physics in Blender. Um, yeah, so Blender is great for physics. Well, I don't know if Blender is great for physics, but Blender just has like a lot of really interesting um, physics that you can work with. So if we go into the physics tab, down here, we can see um, the different options that we have. Cloth is really fun to work with, soft body and rigid body I've used before and I really enjoy them, same with dynamic paint. There's a lot of really cool things you can work with in Blender. Um, but we're just going to do, uh, we're gonna use cloth to make the pillow. So we're gonna inflate a cube. So let's add in a cube. And then we're gonna scale it down like this, make it smaller. So it's the size of like a pillow. We're gonna inflate our cube using the cloth modifier. So we're gonna click on cloth, gonna click on pressure on. And now we're gonna go back to our timeline. So click here and then we're gonna go to timeline. So this brings up the frames of like the animation of your timeline. So when you have any physics that are occurring, um, they're gonna occur on the timeline as they're happening frame by frame. Um, so this shows us all of our frames. So at the moment that's just falling through. So we need to add a collision. So we're gonna just click on our picnic rug here and we're gonna go collision so that that um, doesn't just fall through that. So now if we play that, that's sitting there. Okay, beautiful. But we need this to inflate. <laughs> okay, so we need to add um, subdivisions to this. So I always forget how to make this, but you know, I don't wanna pretend like, 
I'm a, you know, someone who can remember all this stuff. So we're going to do it on the fly. We're going to select all of our faces in edit mode and we're going to subdivide them ourselves. We're going to give it a bunch of subdivisions. I think 10, you know what, let's go with 20. Okay, let's go back into edit mode and let's get out of that isolation by pressing slash. And then, yeah, look, look, we're getting there. So I'm just pressing play and that's letting that simulation run. So yeah, we've got, <laughs> we've got some kind of a pillow. Um, let's turn up that pressure and see what happens. Yep, okay, closer. Let's go back to zero to reset the animation and let's turn it up. Let's turn it up to like 10. Yeah, okay, that's cute. I'm feeling good about that cushion. Um, so when it's about at 80 frames, I'd say that that's done. So I'm gonna make sure that that's set to 80 here and then I'm gonna apply that modifier. So I'm going, I'm leaving the physics tab and I'm going back into modifiers. I'm gonna click this drop down, and I'm gonna click apply. Then once we've done that, we're going to add a subdivision surface and that's looking great. Let's just go straight smooth there. Yeah, cool. I'm pretty happy with that pillow. Um, so then I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and then let's rotate it a little bit um, so that it kind of makes sense for the composition. There's like supposed to be three people sitting and eating. Yeah, okay, cool. That's looking pretty cute with the pillows now. Okie dokie, so from here, I'm feeling like we have enough in our scene that it's time to start adding in some materials and some lighting, and then we'll add the final touches later. So let's just save this one, and then I'm gonna turn on render preview. Okay, so it's really dark. Now, what I really like using in Blender is I really like to add in an HDRI, which is like, um, it's like the lighting of a studio into this scene. So it lights the scene as if it was in a studio. Um, so I'm going to pull in one of these. So I'm here in World. I'm going to make sure this is background and then Color. I'm going to click on this little um, yellow dot here and go Environment Texture. And now I'm going to open up an HDRI. I got to find where they're saved first, which is always kind of difficult for me. They call it EXR. Um, and I'm going to pick resting place because this is an outdoor scene. So you can download this one from Polyhaven for free, which is amazing. I really love um, HDRIs, I feel like they just give a beautiful, really fast, easy lighting to your scene um, without you really having to do anything at all, which is super convenient. Now, I don't like being able to see it in the background. I'm going to go into render, film, and then transparent. So then we can only see um, the lighting. Okie dokie, so that's actually looking, to be honest, really cute. I'm gonna fix up the lighting more later, but first let's figure out all of our materials. So here I'm just gonna use really basic materials. So we're gonna switch back to Shader Editor. Um, I quite like the color of this, actually. It's pretty, I want it to look really pink. That's cute. Okay, for our plate, I'm gonna start naming my materials. Um, for plate, I'm going to go with a really low roughness here. We're going to add the plate material to all of those plates. Now we're going to do the donuts. We're just going to go with like a cinnamony colored. Oh, 
Looks pretty good there. I don't think it needs too much more editing. Um, let's just go. Ah, let's make sure we name this. Donut. I feel like that plate also needs one. It feels a little bit sad <laughs> to not give them one. Cool. Okay, let's give this orange juice one. I want it to be like super orange. So I've also got, um, I'm using cycles in my render preview. If your computer can't handle that, definitely try using Eevee and see if you can um, work live with that while you're adding your materials. Um, otherwise you can try using render preview. Um, so then it just gives you this really flat looking um, render preview, but you can still get the materials um, sorted out if your computer can't can only handle cycles or EV in an actual final render as you're doing the render. If you can't use it live in a live preview, um, that's totally fine. Just use um, material preview mode. I'm going to go back into cycles. You're just going through this all pretty fast. I'm not doing anything particularly crazy with my materials here. I want this to kind of be like, be like that sort of color. Um, this one needs to be a nice like greeny color. It's looking good there. We'll make that one brown for the dirt. Perfect. Okay, let's add, I want the pillow to be like pink, I think. Maybe like there is good. Okay, now this is supposed to be glass. So from our new material, we don't actually have any options to make it glass in here. So we're going to have to find um, a new node. These are called nodes. We're going to find a new node that is going to let us have a glass material. So we're going to right click and go add. And then actually we're going to search it. <laughs> when you go shift A, um, it gives you the option to search and then we're going to search in glass, glass BSDF, drop that in there and then we're going to reconnect it here. So we're going to get drag this green guy and put him into surface. And there we go. Now that's given us glass. So now we have the roughness and the IOR to work with. So play around with these and see what works best for you. Um, this doesn't have to be realistic. So I'm going to go for a pretty high IOR and add a little bit of roughness in there. That's looking super cute. Let's go. Oh, where is it? Glass and glass. And then let's give this um, juice the same color as the orange juice. And then you can see it in there, which is really cute. Alrighty, so we are pretty much there. Now for the picnic blanket, we're going to use a slightly more complicated method. So we're going to go over here and we're going to go shift A, and then we're going to search checker, pop that here, and then we're going to drag this color into base color, and that brings up this checkered option. Now you can change the scale of your checkering. It's a little bit crazy around the outsides there. But that's okay, I think we're just going to roll with it um, today for the sake of keeping things simple. And then I'm going to pick some colors. Oh, where's my... So let's go with... Slightly warm. And then... Oh, that's cute. Yep, let's go with about there. And then let's pick 
the scale that's going to work for us. I think about there is good. I feel like that um, is looking pretty nice. Um, but yeah, it just feels a little bit empty. <clears throat> um, it just feels a little bit empty at the moment. So what we're going to do is add in a couple little bits of grass and some petals, which are just really simple. Since they're so small in the scene, we don't really have to worry very much. Um, well, let's just shade smooth on that. Um, we don't really have to do anything too hectic because we can't really see them. So I'm just shift and right clicking um, to move my 3D cursor there. Um, and then to make like a little grass thing, I'm going to go with a cylinder. I'm going to scale that guy down really far. Move him up and we're just going to use a similar technique as what we did for the um, orange juice. Just going E and then S, E and then S. Beautiful. And then here I'm just going to press M and merge at the center. Perfect. Okay, just a little trick here is if you're starting to struggle, like ah, I want to like orbit this, but I can't quite, um, it's like, you know, orbiting around the middle of the scene instead, you can go view and then frame selected. And now you orbit around this, which is really, really useful. Okay, now I'm just going to grab this and maybe move it like this so that it's a bit more organic looking instead of um, so straight like this and then let's just add a loop cut here maybe we'll go like this it's looking a little bit funky <laughs> um, but kind of grass like I guess let's add a subdivision surface to him um, Feel like it needs to go a lot more skinny and then I'm going to scale it down and then I'll just put that down there so we don't have to worry so much yeah so look it's not perfect but it will do <laughs> for what we're um, using it for so this is our grass material here so I'm going to make sure that that has the grass material now I quite like to just like put them near the um the picnic blanket and I am just going to duplicate these and then I'm going to rotate them and I'm going to scale them in different axes to give them variation without actually having to do very much. Um, we don't have to do any extra modeling but then it just looks really cute like that. And then you know we'll just move them around a bit like this rotate them we can even add like a cluster of like a third one to give it a bit more variation Yeah, so that just makes the scene look way cuter, in my opinion. Just having a couple little details, I feel like can really um, make some difference. Okay, cute. And now let's just add in a... Hmm, I think we should go with another cylinder to make like a petal. And we'll just make it really small so that it's like a spring petal. And then let's just like go like this. So it's this shape a little bit more. We'll just add in some beveled edges. Cute. And then I'm actually just going to shade that smooth. I'm not going to do anything to that. Um, and then we're going to add in like a blossom material. Oh, that doesn't feel pink. 
fix that off in the lighting. And then I'm just going to do the same here and just duplicate it a bunch of times. And then I'll come back and rotate them in a minute. I'm just using Shift D so that we save a bunch of time here or else this tutorial is gonna get seriously long. Even though I said I didn't wanna use shortcuts, you know, sometimes um, sacrifices have to be made. I don't want these to look like too organized, like that I've spaced them out. <laughs> so I'm just trying to like add a couple little groups of them here and there. And now I'm just rotating them to give it some variation. Okay, that is looking super cute. Um, so now to finish us off, I'm going to set up our camera. So we still have this camera here from before. So I'm going to go into that um, just by clicking toggle camera view and then I'm gonna lock my camera to my view. Um, and then I'm gonna try and find the best angle. So now we're gonna put it like here. I think that looks pretty cute, uh, but we need a plane. So let's just add, sorry, let's not use the shortcut. Let's add a plane here to give us like a background and let's scale it up a lot. Just moving that so that it feels the entire camera space there. Um, we're gonna move these all up so that we don't see the grid anymore. Um, so then let's just pan this one up like this. Beautiful. And then let's pick a nice color. Um, I think like a just a soft pink I think will be nice. Alrighty, now let's sort out our lighting. So, um, first of all, we're going to go down here um, and we're going to click on object and we're going to click on world instead. Now this is our HDRI here, so I'm using resting place two. Um, so now that we are here, we are going to go into preferences and we're going to go into add-ons. We're going to turn on node wrangler and then we're going to exit out. Now we're going to click on this one and control T and that's gonna bring up the mapping here. So now we can rotate our HDRI, which is super, super useful. So then you can rotate it to see um, the lighting that you want. Now I'm thinking that like here is super, super cute. So I really like that. So I'm feeling that this HDRI is giving me really intense shadows, which I'm not really liking. It's like from like a low sun. Um, so basically I'm just trying to deal with that really big shadow. So we can also like move, oh yes. Yes, that's so cute. Okay, we're gonna move that to there. Okay, so so I do this a lot. I feel like this is a, I don't know, I don't really see people showing this is their method very often, but I find it a lot faster than setting up my own lights to just work with an HDRI um, and adjust the rotation until I get something that I feel really happy with. So I'm just adjusting um, the rotation until I kind of like get something that I'm feeling happy about. Yeah, I'm quite liking how this looks, actually. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to call the lighting there because I think it's really cute. Um, I'm just going to add a couple more details into the scene um, from where the camera is set up. Oh. I'm going to grab the orange juice and also put it in this cup closest to the camera. we go. Cute. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to click on the outside of my camera to pull up the camera settings. 
Um, and we're going to go in and start adding some depth of field. So I'm just checking on the depth of field here. And I'm going to turn down my f-stop pretty low. And then focus distance. Yeah, I just feel like I really like that blurriness that it gives. I'm going to give it a go in orthographic orthographic mode um, my, to change my camera into orthographic mode because I think that it can give you an interesting outcome <clears throat> when you're working with a scene like this that's very like square I think that it can make it look really interesting okay so our depth of field is going a bit crazy here so let's just turn up our f-stop okay that's cute uh, and then let's take out what does this say orthographic scale out yeah that's so cute and then we just want to shift it in the y to make sure that it stays in the middle oh my gosh this scene is so cute um and then yeah i'm feeling like that is really cute i'm just gonna turn the f-stop up a little bit yeah so you can edit these um as much as you want to get the final um look that suits you. This is just what I personally um, want for my final render. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling really good about that. I'm feeling like that is super cute. I want to try and make sure that this is just about centered. Um, Shadow is just throwing me off a little bit there. <coughs> oh gosh. Okay, cute. Um, yeah, and I would say that I'm pretty happy with that um, as my final render. So if we now go into render, just going to turn up my samples a little bit because I know that my computer can handle it, um, but choose whatever works for you. We're going to make sure that we save this before we render. Um, and then I actually want it to be um, a really high quality render that I can zoom in on. So I'm going to go up to 200%. So that's just going to make that like um, 2000 pixels rather than 1000, just make a higher quality render. And then let's click up here and go to render image. Ta-da! So cute. Alrighty, and then we're going to save that one out. And we're going to call that, what? Picnic done. Dot PNG. Beautiful. Save. And there you go. That's how you make a cute little render um, in Blender. So now that you've got all the skills you need to be able to make this final render, I have made some sketches of extra little bits and pieces that you now have the skills to be able to model yourself and add materials to. So I would love if you model some of these or come up with your own ideas and add them into the scene or change the scene up a bit, um, change the colors, the lighting, uh, make it however you would like. And then I would love to see it. If you want to send it to me on socials, I have all my links below. I would totally love to see what you've made. Um, for the next step after this, you can start trying to make a room of sorts. You have all the skills now to be able to squish down um, cubes to make walls and bevel the edges and then, you know, make a little table and some teacups. Um, yeah, so those would be the two things that I would recommend you to do next. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if anything wasn't working for you. Um, I will be responsive in the comments. So thank you so much for watching and I really hope that this was useful for you.